Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 6, Lesson 1, Space Fighter, Currency, and Loot. The objectives for this lesson are to create a currency system, then we'll create our loot-based class, and then we're going to implement some loot collection. Let's start by setting up a currency system. So here we are back in our project, and at the end of week five, we had basically set up the ability for the enemies to spawn using a few different methods. And this week, we're gonna to continue to work on our game. But let's start by creating a system where the enemies will drop loot when they're destroyed. We're at a point in our course where these systems that we're creating have more than one implementation. So you may find a different way to implement a loot system that you like better. I'm gonna show you a system that I like to use that's common throughout all of my projects. And what I usually like to do is set up my loot system as its own component. That way we could attach it to any actor that we want. So let's go to our components. And let's create a new blueprint class in here. And this is gonna be an actor component. And what we want is some way to contain the loot. So I'm gonna call this a bank. And we need one variable, and that's just going to be a variable to keep track of how much of our currency that we currently have. I'm gonna create a new variable, and we'll just call this currency. And this will be an integer, and let's compile that. And our default value is set to zero. Now, if you wanna call it something else, gold, credits, something like that, you can. I'll just keep it vague for now. And really what we want is we want the ability to add to this currency and we want the ability to subtract from this currency. So I'm gonna create a function called add currency, and it will have an input of an integer called amount. And all we really need to do is take that amount and add it to what we currently have and set that as the new currency. We can duplicate this function and just call it subtract currency and just swap this out with the subtraction node. And that's all we need from this right now. What we wanted, and again, like I said, there's multiple ways that you could implement this. You could just have this being tracked directly on our player ship, and there's really no problem with that. The only reason I chose not to do this is because if we wanted to swap out the ship for something else, then we would no longer have access to that currency component. Additionally, you could try adding it to the game mode, which is another acceptable implementation. The issue again is if your game has different game modes, you would need to rewrite that functionality every single time. So the benefit of making it a component is that you could just attach it to any actor that needs to have access to currency and you don't have to rewrite it every time. So here in my player ship class, I'm just gonna add our BP bank and now our player ship can have access to those functions, which were add currency and subtract currency. So the next thing I wanna do is create a loot class, and that way we can have our enemy start dropping loot for the player to collect. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a loot base class that we could use for various types of loot in our game, and then I'll create a child of that class for currency. So, Back here in our game, let's create a new blueprint class, and this can be an actor, and I'm gonna call this BP Loot Base. And I want the ability for our player to interact with this, so I'm gonna create a sphere collider, and I wanna make that the root. And with this sphere selected, if I go to my event graph and right click, I can add an event for my sphere, and I wanna do on begin overlap. And again, notice it says sphere. So this will be called when something interacts with our sphere. But I only want this to happen when the player interacts with this. So I'm going to drag off of this and cast a player ship. And that way, if it's not the player ship, it'll fail and we'll only call the next functionality when the player is what interacts with it. For now, let's just set up a print function to print when the player interacts. And we can just drag one of these in. And we'll notice 
that we're printing string player ship when we interact with it. And one thing we can do to make this a little bit easier is our collision sphere, let's just make it visible for now. So when we have the sphere selected, we can type hidden and deselect that. And now we'll be able to see it in our game. And it's a little too small. So let's make that sphere slightly larger. That looks like a good size. So from our loop base, let's right click on here and we'll say create child blueprint class. And we're gonna call this BP currency. And here, we just want some visual representation of our currency. And I'm just gonna use a cube. And I'll put this green material on there for now. And now we can see our currency there in the game. I'm gonna do a couple things really quick. I wanna disable the collision on this cube. And then in and then in BP currency, I want to override this function, and I'm still going to cast a player ship, but now I want to actually add some currency to the player's bank. And we can see here that I have access to that function. And the only thing left to do is set the amount of currency we want to add. We can drag off this and make it a variable and call it amount. And let's start by putting something like 100. So every time the player collects one of these currencies, they'll get 100 currency added to their bank. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna destroy this after we collect the currency, and that will prevent the player from going over the currency multiple times to continue adding to their bank. And there we go. But what I'd really like is for the player to be able to see how much currency they've collected. So I think it's time in our game that we start to set up some sort of UI. And that's what we're gonna handle in the next lesson.